we'll sing it out in. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitchanu bidvareha natan lanu et Yeshua meshihenu vitzivanu lehiot ola olam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the world, who has sanctified us by your word, given us Yeshua, our Messiah, and commanded us to be light to the world. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. It is our regular tradition to blow the shofar at the beginning of service. But you know, sometimes these regular traditions start and nobody ends up ever explaining them. And there are certainly the people who know why we blow the shofar, but there certainly could also be people who don't know why that happens. So just so you are aware, there is a feast in the beginning of the fall cycle, which happens in, on an annual basis, which some call the Feast of Trumpets, some call Yom Teruah, which is literally the Feast of Blasts. And this is a feast that is designed to awaken God's people to spiritual reality after a long season and a long period of working. And so one of the things that happens is with anything that is Jewish, including the shofar, there's a variety of traditions that grows up around it. But in the ancient time and in the ancient world, the shofar was used for a point of direction during battle. It was used for marking the months. When the beginning of the month would happen, someone would blast a shofar, and then on the edge of hearing that, someone else would blast a shofar, and it would move like a telegram across the land that this was the beginning and the marking of the month. And also what ended up happening was when there was a need for an assembly, sacred or otherwise, there would also be a blast of the shofar. So for us on a weekly basis, the blast of the shofar marks a call to the people of God for assembly. It's also said in Jewish tradition that every time the devil hears the shofar, it terrifies him because he's not entirely sure at the beginning whether or not this is the last shofar that finishes him off. Amen. Amen. Amen and Shabbat Shalom. Those of you who are keeping careful tabs on what happens around here know that I was gone last week and I had a very joyous event. And the very joyous event that I had was that my youngest daughter graduated from college. And this week I have a daughter who moved from her 20s into the next age after her 20s. And so I have three children who are no longer in their 20s. And I have four of my five kids who have graduated from college. So I feel like with this white hair, I've been, things have been accomplished around me. You know, I don't take credit for what God has done, but I'm just really thrilled for the accomplishment and the good blessings and the things that God has done in terms of pouring out upon us. And I trust that as you move forward with your life, you too have great joy in the things that God is doing and in what's being accomplished. 
Amen. Shout for joy to the Lord, cry with triumph all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, come before Him, come before Him, come before Him with joyful song. Shout for joy to the Lord, cry with triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Know that the Lord, know that the Lord, know that the Lord alone is God. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and come into His courts with praise. The Lord He has made us, we are His. Give thanks to Him, give thanks to Him. Give thanks to Him and bless His name. Shout for joy to the Lord. Cry with triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him, come before Him, come before Him with joyful songs. For the Lord alone. Is good, his grace will stand till all is gone, and his truth to all ages. Give thanks to him, give thanks to him, give thanks to him, and praise his name. Shout for joy to the Lord, cry with triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Know Come. that the Lord, know that the Lord, know that the Lord alone is God. His love endures, His love endures, His love endures forever. Unchanging promise, unchanging promise. Unchanging promise throughout all generations. Shout for joy to the Lord. Cry with triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him. Come before Him. Come before Him with joyful song. Shout for joy to the Lord, cry with triumph all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness. Know that the Lord, know that the Lord, know that the Lord alone is God. Know that the Lord, know that the Lord. Know that the Lord alone is God. Come house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light, walk in the light. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. Come, come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light, walk in the light. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. The haughty man is humbled, the lofty one brought low. For the Lord alone will be exalted in that day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Yeshua is the Lord and to the glory of God. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. 
Walk in the light, walk in the light. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. The haughty man is humbled, the lofty one brought low. For the Lord alone will be exalted in that day when every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Yeshua is the Lord and to the glory of God. We're going to walk, 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 walk in the light. We're going to walk, 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 walk in the light. We're gonna walk, 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 walk in the light. We're gonna walk, 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 walk in the light. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Come, house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. We're gonna walk in the light of the Lord. Come, join us. Walk in the light of the Lord. This is my joy in the victory dance. This is your hand reaching out to me. The grave is overcome. Our Messiah rose for us. Every battle you have won. Every battle you this is my cry this is my defense this is my joy in a victory dance this is your hand reaching out to me this is your plan to set all sinners free one two three four Yeshua fight for me Yeshua, yours the victory, victorious, victorious, delivered from the past, Messiah reigning over us, victorious at last, victorious at last. Who lives in me is greater 
than the enemy and he who lives in me is greater than the enemy and he who lives in me is greater than the enemy victorious victorious the grave is overcome our messiah rose for us every battle you have won every battle you have won victorious victorious delivered from the past messiah reigning over us Victorious at last, victorious at last, victorious at last. Different parts of Scripture seem to speak to di different generations in different times. And there was a combination of psalms that I was in, including Psalm 1, Psalm 2, and one, Psalm 127. And I was just looking at all of these, and it just seemed like these together spoke to our generation. We are a generation of anxiety. We are a generation that are type A personalities. We are a generation that feels like we have to accomplish, accomplish, accomplish. And this song for me is a combination of scriptures that speak to the fact that unless God's building it, all your anxiety and all your crazy accomplishes very little. Two, three, four. If Adonai builds the house and he watches over the city, only then do your long hours matter Craftsmen and the watchers together His word only will stand I need to be reminded of that, so sing with me. If Adonai builds the house And he watches over the city Only then do your long hours matter? Craftsmen and the watchers together His word only will stand. Blessed is the man who walks upright, avoids wicked counsel, scoffers at night. His face is turned to God's word. If Adonai builds the house And he watches over the city Only then do your long hours matter Craftsmen and the watchers together His word only will stand The wicked are like the dust in the wind Unable to stand when judgment begins The way of the wicked is destroyed If Adonai builds the house And he watches over the city Only then do your long hours matter Craftsmen and the watchers together His word only will stand. The nations rage and people plot together. The kings of the earth take counsel together. United to cast off Messiah. If Adonai builds the house and he watches over the city, only then do your long hours matter Craftsmen and the watchers together His word only will stand Heaven laughs and His voice 
joys ring on the holy hill this messiah your king kiss the sun and take refuge in him if Adonai builds a house and he watches over the city only then do your long hours matter Craftsmen and the watchers together His word only will stand You are my son, I'll give you The nations, the ends of the earth As your possession The rebel you'll break as play shot If Father and I build the house and he watches over the city only then do your long hours matter craftsmen and the watchers together his word only will stand if god and i builds the house As the trap is sprung at an unexpected hour Do you see Him coming on the clouds of heaven? In the way He led, so will be His return His day will come as a thief in the night to a partying people caught unaware scoffers will miss the obvious signs as Noah's disaster will again sweep them away do you see him coming on the clouds of heaven in the way he left so will be Return. For we will hear of wars, rumors of wars, nation against nation as kingdoms fight, famines and earthquakes around the world. But this is only the start. Do you see him coming on the clouds of? heaven in the way he left so will be his return the loss will increase as the day draws close hatred sweeps nations and love grows cold my people are betrayed as false prophets arise the saved will endure to the end you see him coming on the clouds of heaven in the way he led so will be his return for a sigh will descend with the command the archangel's voice the shofars of god to be caught up with him 
both living and dead, so we will always be with Adonai. Do you see Him coming on the clouds of heaven in the way He left? So will be His return. Do you see Him coming on the clouds of heaven in the way he left, so will be his return. Blessed of my Father, take what is yours to inherit. A kingdom has been crafted for you from the start of the world. Sing that with me again. Come the blessed of my father take what is yours to inherit a kingdom has been crafted for you from the start of the world when the son of man comes along with all his angels the nations come to stand as he takes up his right in my hunger you fed me in my thirst you give me drink as a refugee you gave me clothes in my sickness you brought me back to hell when the son of man comes along with all his angels the nations come to stand as he takes up his bright throne. We don't remember feeding you. We don't remember giving you drink. We don't remember giving you clothes. We don't remember helping in your sickness. When the Son of Man comes, along with all his angels, the nations come to stand as he takes up his right road. He draws the sheep, calls the goats, preparing reward, even punishment. The nations are in the balance even so he is coming soon even so he is coming soon even so he is coming soon when the son of man comes 
along with all his angels, the nations come to stand as he takes up his right. Come the blessed of my Father, take what is yours to inherit. A kingdom has been crafted for you from the start of the world. I'm not sure exactly why, but it appears to me that just singing well-known scripture songs makes Yeshua very different than the guy who is someone sometimes proclaimed in certain quarters. And he has his kingdom that he is building. He has his purposes that he's in pursuit of. He has something that he is doing. And sometimes the greatest challenge for us is not to try and turn him into someone safe, meek, and mild, but rather to allow him to be king of kings, lord of lords, and the one who comes from outside the camp, but the one who has a definite vision for the way the world ought to be. Amen? I have come to bring a fire on the earth. I have come to bring a fire on the earth. And how I wish it was so. to pass through deep waters of death distress until it is done in darkness watching the flame I have come to bring a fire on the earth I have come to bring a fire on the earth and how I wish it was already burning how I want to see for it to get better this is not what I'm doing as the fire burns brighter I have come to bring a fire on the earth I have come to bring a fire on the earth and how I wish it was already burning how I want to see it ablaze I come to divide even families my word will be a snare. Sons and 
fathers, daughters, and mothers as the forest burn. I have come to bring a fire on the earth. I have come to bring a fire on the earth. And how I wish it was already burning. How I want to see it ablaze. Do you see what is coming on the earth? Storm clouds rising from the west, scorching heat. Mighty wind, the oil fields and inferno. I have come to bring a fire on the earth. I have come to bring a fire on the earth. And how I wish it was all. and declare the Shema with me. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai thank you and praise you for who you are, Messiah. We thank you and praise you for who you are, King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you for who you are because you are powerful. You have manifest yourself and you are oh so different than we are. Lord, we come before you and to, to confess this, Often what ends up happening is we try and make you into the image of who we would like you to be. And you are not that person. You are instead someone who is extraordinary, someone who is amazing, someone who has seen 
from before any of this existed. And Lord, it is your will and your heart and your intention to take us out of this present age into a new age, which is beyond our imagination. Lord, help us to be a people who see you. Help us to be a people who walk with you. Help us to be a people who know you. Help us to be a people transformed, a people of shalom, a people of peace, a people of the presence of the Most High God, Lord. We just really thank you and bless you and praise you for this. In Yeshua's name, amen. There are parts of Scripture that speak very clearly to us. And, you know, one of the things that I find interesting is that a great deal of those who seek to be faithful to the Word of God have difficulty holding the whole document from Genesis to Revelation together in a spiritual tension. And every so often I, I, I visit some other places and stop in and I see people who have their different takes on the Word of God. And I probably should just reveal to you that my bias is very clear. I believe that movements that hold on to portions of the Word of God are better than movements that do not hold on to portions of the Word of God. But at the same time, I believe that the more a movement integrates larger portions of Scripture, the more there's the possibility, at the very least, that extraordinary and wonderful things will take place. And so I enjoy preaching from all parts of Scripture. And I am thrilled with what God says and who he is and what he's doing. But if there was one thing and one thing alone that I could impart to my generation, it would be the character of the Most High God, the character of the Creator, the character of who before any of this happened, he moves and he speaks. The character of the one who takes patience for the creation to come into being. The character of the one who, whether things seem to go quickly in our eyes or whether they take epics and millennia to develop, he has the patience for this. And in the beginning of Genesis, there's a creation. In the beginning of Genesis, our falling short of who God is It breaks the heart of creation. And in the midst of this, generation after generation, lifetime after lifetime, there is an outpouring of who God is as we wait for him to find a man. And this man is going to be different because this man is going to tell his son about who his God is. 
And this man is going to make such an impression on his son that when his son tells his son about who the God is, it's going to survive generations. So we get the patriarchs with Abraham, with Isaac, and Jacob. And we read through it, and you can read through Genesis in an afternoon, honestly. But you look at the amount of time that passes and you see the patience that God has. And you see the moving through. And what ends up happening is despite him taking a people to himself, in order for him to create the character uh, that needs to be created in the people, in, in order to create a people who are going to be merciful and who are not going to be arrogant, hard, and proud, he has to put them in 400 years of slavery. That's not an accident. That's generation after generation after generation of greater and greater difficulty. This is the silversmith who is putting heat on the silver and taking out the dross and the impurity to the point where what ends up happening is it gets to a place where the people are not what they were when they first in, went into slavery. Even coming out of slavery, what's been taken out of them, there's been something else put into them, and they've become slaves. They have become a people who, in the first generation, simply cannot take the impulse and the drive of being a free people. They can't take initiative. They have been so cowed and so beaten that all they're looking for is a new slave master to replace the old slave master. Another generation has to be waited on to grow up. They can take initiative, but they can learn from what's happened in the past. It would be a long sermon if I go through all the rest of the pieces of salvation history as I see it and as I know it. But understand that when I come to Scripture, the presentation of Yeshua the Messiah breaks into human history. And we see the one about whom what he says of himself, he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You have one who is not anti-Torah. He is not anti-prophets. He is not anti-writings. In fact, if you go through what Yeshua quotes in the Gospels, you see that he has a great affinity for the book of Deuteronomy. And that is by far the most quoted piece of Scripture of anything that Yeshua draws on in his earthly ministry. And you have somebody who comes to show us the character of God. Because anything short of him, we keep on getting it wrong. And I am thrilled when Yeshua is raised up. But sometimes it concerns me because some of the people who raise up Yeshua are unwilling to allow himself to dress himself in the vestments of the rest of Scripture. And when Yochanan says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, he is taking Yeshua and tying him both to the Father, but he's also tying him to the revelation of Scripture. So I'm going to read to you from Revelation chapter 1. And one of the things that I love about Revelation chapter 1 is this is a passage which talks about the resurrected Yeshua. And what you have here is you have a very old man at this point in time, Yochanan, who has been exiled. Okay, He's been such a problem for the Roman Empire that they've decided that they're going to put him on a rocky island where he can cause the Roman Empire no more problems. I hope that at least a remnant of us 
cause so much trouble for the generation that we live in that they will want to put us in exile. Because this is faithfulness to the Lord. And you know, sometimes we get to a point where we think, well, you know, if we only really make people like us, then we're doing what God wants. And it's just kind of like, friendship with the world is not the goal. And it doesn't mean that you have to be difficult just for the sake of being difficult. Although there are days that people accuse me of that. When I was going down to Virginia, I went with my uncle, who is a generation older than I am, and is a real character. And I went with my sister, who's a bit younger than I am, though not a generation younger than I am. And uh, we were, all three of us were in the car, and so I regaled them with tales of life as a Messianic rabbi in Utica and what happens when Utica can't stand a worshiping community in the center of downtown. So I told them the story of what, what we've been through and what we've done and how God has given us grace and how God's given us an attorney and, and all the rest of this kind of stuff and our, our necessity and our need to protect the land that God has given us. And I told my uncle, I don't like bullies. And bullies who go and pick on other people and I don't get along well. It brings out something in me. And my uncle chuckled and said, he thinks that the city of Utica think that I am a bully. And I said, well, if you stand with no money, if you stand with one little piece of property in downtown Utica, and if you stand with nothing but the call of God, and that causes other people to think that you're a bully, I'm not sure I can fix that. But sometimes people mistake the peace-loving people of God for pacifists. And so I love living in shalom and in the peace that God gives. I seek not to have trouble with the people around me, but as I've said to my friends on occasion, don't confuse me for a pacifist. This is the revelation which God gave to Yeshua the Messiah so that he could show his servants what must happen very soon. He communicated it by sending his angel to his servant Yochanan, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah as much as he saw. Blessed is the reader and the hearer of the words of this prophecy, provided they obey the things written in it. For the time is near. From Yochanan to the seven messianic communities in the province of Asia. Grace and shalom to you from the one who is, who was, and who is coming. From the sevenfold spirit before his throne and from Yeshua the Messiah, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the earth's kings. To him, the one who loves us, who has freed us, from our sins at the cost of his blood, who has caused us to be a kingdom, that is, kohenim, or priests, for God his Father, to him be the glory and the rulership forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, including those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the land will mourn him. Yes, and amen. I am the Aleph and the Tav, the Alpha and the Omega, the A and the Z, says Adonai. God of heaven's armies, the one who is, who was, and who is coming. I, Yochanan, am a brother of yours, a fellow sharer 
and the suffering, kingship, and perseverance that comes from being united with Yeshua. I had been exiled to the island called Patmos for having proclaimed the message of God and borne witness to Yeshua. I came to be in the Spirit on the day of the Lord, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, Write down what you see on a scroll and send it to the seven messianic communities, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see who was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven gold menorahs. And among the menorahs was someone like a son of man, wearing a robe down to his feet and a gold band around his chest. His head and hair were as white as snow-white wool, his eyes like a fiery flame, his feet like burnished brass refined in a furnace, and his voice like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, out of his mouth went a sharp double-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength." When I saw him, I fell down at his feet like a dead man. He placed his right hand upon me and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last, the living one. I was dead. But look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys to death and Sheol. So write down what you see, both what is now and what will be happen afterwards. Here is the secret meaning of the seven stars you saw in my right hand and the seven gold menorahs of the seven stars are the angels or messengers of the seven messianic communities. And the seven menorahs are the seven messianic communities. What can we say from this passage based on who Yeshua is? One of the things that I will say is very simple. Everything is under his power and under his control. There is nothing which has escaped him. Furthermore, this has the same formula in Revelation chapter 1, that the end of Messianic Jews or Hebrews has the same yesterday, today, and forever. We proclaim Messiah because he is outside of time. We proclaim Messiah because he is not fickle, he does not change. We pro proclaim Messiah because anybody who claims that they have a greater revelation of him than what Scripture says. Anybody who wants to give you a variation or an improvement on who he is here is horrifically misled because he does not change. Furthermore, what you have here is you have a glorified look at Yeshua. One of the things that we have to live with in this present age is we have to live with a certain amount of the glory of God being shielded because of our own sin natures and because of our own propensity to sin. I would promise you that if God unveiled His glory to us this evening fully the way that it is seen in the throne room of heaven, I promise you that there would not be a living person left. I promise you that the very glory of God would move through the room and would take and would burn up any sin that was in the room and that the salvation that he has given us has paid for our sin but we are in a process where he is redeeming us and taking us and moving through us and cleansing us and purifying us. And I do not want to discourage you because in many cases, many of you have been on a path for a period of time and the path that you have been on has been a refining fire in you. 
And many of you are much better than you were in an age and a time that you can remember. Many of you have been purified from much pride. Many of you have been purified from lust. Many of you have become people of commitment, people of depth, people of character, people who take the instruction of the Ten Commandments seriously, people who take the additional instruction that goes on top of the Ten Commandments, which is Yeshua's Sermon on the Mount, which is paralleled by his Sermon on the Plain, where he takes what was external originally in Torah, and he says, don't think that this is merely external, but this is a life lived from the inside out. And some people try and take the instructions in the Hebrew Scriptures and go, well, you know, we, 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 we get rid of this and we get rid of that, we get rid of the other thing. Yeshua, when he came, he taught a Torah that moves from the Spirit from the inside out. And if you are a people of God's instruction and of God's Word, you do not have to be externally fastidious worrying about this because the Spirit of the Most High God has indwelt with you. And if you dwell to please the Spirit of God who is inside you, you don't have to be picky, Annie, about how certain external things are. And you don't have to niggle other people either. You just get to live a powerful Spirit-led life. And this is the sort of thing that in Jeremiah 31 when he says that no more will one person teach his brother to know the Lord, for they, for they will all know me from the least to the greatest. To be a spirit-led people is to be a people who have encountered the Most High God and who are living on a level where we're not trying to beat them up with this little command or that little command or trying to play the game of religious gotcha with it, you know? This is not what the life of this generation in this era is to be. This is to be a people who live in a fashion where the clarity and the purification of standing before the Most High and standing before Messiah and standing before the glorified one is. And you know, I quote scripture more than most things. But every so often there's someone who has had an insight who's not in Scripture who I enjoy referencing to. And C.S. Lewis talks at one point in time in his writings about if you were to see who any one of us in this room was to be in our glorified bodies, so great would be the glory that we would think that that person in the glorified presence that they are going to be granted from Messiah, we would encounter that person and think them to be a God. And this is God's plan and purpose for each of us. And every so often there's religions that come around, along that try and tell you that by your seizing power, by your seizing control, by your seizing the other things of the present age, you can be a God. And I assure you that the path to being purified, the path to being sanctified, the path to being set apart and holy, the path to becoming like Messiah comes in humility. It comes in gracious acceptance of the Spirit of the Most High God. It comes in understanding that this may be an age of suffering for many. This may be an age where you're not happy with the process and the procedure that God's going through. It may be a, a process and a procedure where you go, God, if you really loved me, I don't understand why you would let me go through great difficulty. You know, every so often there are celebrities who trot across the stage in front of us. And right now there's a pair of celebrities who have salaciously been behaving badly in a televised court case 
that has gotten a hold of all of America. And the ex-husband is famous for playing a pirate. And the ex-wife is famous for playing the girlfriend of Aquaman. And they are just behaving so badly. And so these things all come, come to the surface, but what the saddest thing that I have heard about what is going on is that the ex-wife was a 16-year-old, had a personal tragedy, and because of her personal tragedy, she decided that God could not exist and became an atheist because of the death of somebody who was close to her. Now, the fact that they're famous and the fact that they behave badly is not of terrible interest to me. But the idea that there is a segment of people who have a disappointment with God because he doesn't do what you want him to do, understand that Revelation chapter 1 is written by someone who is in exile on the island of Patmos. This is someone who did everything that God wanted him to do, was fearless in his witness and testimony, and if anybody could have disappointment in the way that his life went, it was Yochanan who was in exile on Patmos. And every so often people, either because of the death of somebody around them or because of the constraint of the life that they have, they get to a point where they say, God, if you were really God and if you were really powerful and if you could really play this out the way it ought to be played out, you would keep this from happening to me and for me and in my life. There are people in this room who have suffered great loss and continued to walk with the Lord. There are people in this room for whom their life didn't go the way that they intended but Messiah ended up taking Yochanan, who was in exile and who was the least of these and whom I am sure he believed that his life was utterly useless to the body of Messiah because he was in exile on a rocky outpost in the Mediterranean Sea that he could not get off of. And God came to him. And what ends up happening is he ends up here on Patmos. And he gets a revelation that I think I can safely say nobody else in his generation got. He gets a visitation from Messiah. And this isn't simply a dream of Yeshua sitting on the corner of his bed. But this is the full glorification of Yeshua in his resurrected body, only shielded to the extent where it wasn't going to destroy Yochanan. And what ends up happening is the vision of the place where Yeshua is, is a place with seven lampstands. Now those of you who love the Hebrew prophets understand it, where Yeshua is standing here. This is a scene that mirrors the scene in Zechariah that looks forward prophetically. And for Yeshua to be standing amongst the seven menorahs or the seven lampstands is for Yeshua to say, I am fulfilling what was prophesied in Zechariah. And in the midst of what is going on here, Yochanan, who is stuck on an island, stuck in a place where he cannot end up having an impact on his generation, stuck seeing people throwing their lives away, entering into eternity without knowing Messiah and knowing that he has the antidote to the poison that his generation has imbibed. He has that which will set them free from polytheism. 
He has that which will set them free from being slaves to the urges of the Greek and the Roman gods. He has that which will set them free from demonic strongholds that are worshipped in specific cities. And he can't do anything about that. And what ends up happening is here he is. He gets a commission. Write down what you see on a scroll and send it to the seven messianic communities. He sees seven gold menorahs or lampstands. He sees one like the Son of Man standing there. He sees the fulfillment of what the prophets desired to see. One of the things that I would really ask you to pray for me for is I'm giving a presentation next month, which is a theological presentation in town. And the presentation that I'm giving, I'm talking about the kingdom of God. But one of the things that I believe has happened to our generation is we have gotten so accustomed to seeing God fulfill prophecy that we don't recognize it anymore. And the other thing that ended up happening was in the early 1970s, there was a book that was written called Future Shock. And the issue with the book called Future Shock was the author, I think it was Alvin Toffler, if I got it wrong, my forgiveness. Uh, I ask your forgiveness of me. But uh, Alvin Toffler, his book Future Shock, essentially what he was saying was things are ramping up and technology is growing and things are changing so quickly that people won't be able to keep up with things. And what's going to end up happening is it's just going to go so fast that we're not going to be able to get used to the previous generation of change in technology before the next one is on top of us. And I believe that we are living in an area in a time like that, and because things are moving so quickly, and because it's so difficult to integrate what's going on in the world around us, we are missing the fact that biblical prophecy is being fulfilled all around us. We've gotten to a point where you have to be a very old person in this society to have lived before Israel was a state and the Jewish people were regathered. As a result, what has happened is we have a couple generations that are living now that are accustomed to Israel being there. We have lost the fact that Jerusalem returning into Jewish hands it has set the prophetic clock. We see other things that are breaking out all around us. And we're just so accustomed to these things being reality for us because they've been this way for a long time that we're missing that Messiah is fulfilling his promise, that he's preparing and getting ready for things. And we're also missing that the reason that the world is having such difficulty embracing him and because there is so much difficulty at this point in time is because the adversary understands and knows that his time is short. The very encounter of seeing Yeshua left Yochanan, who I would conjecture was probably one of the purest and most holy and set-apart men of his generation. It left him falling down at Yeshua's feet like a dead man. The promise is this. I'm the first, the last, the living one. I was dead, but look, now I am alive forever and ever. We are a people who do not need to fear death. Messiah has conquered it. We are a people whom the fight that you put up against sin is righteous, is pure, is good. We are a people who have not met full holiness and full set-apartness. But we are a people that God is present and alive with us. And he is doing 
great things. We are a people that the power of the Most High God is important. We are a people who are called specifically to integrate an understanding of the Hebrew Scriptures and the New Covenant. We are a people who need to be able to speak to other New Covenant people with the language of the Hebrew Scriptures. We, need, we are also a people that to the Jewish community, we also need to be a people who can speak Messiah in the language of atonement, the language of sacrifice, the language of Messiah, the language of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, the language of the one who stands in the midst of the, the lampstands, Yeshua, who, who is prophesied in Zechariah and who is spoken of in terms of his return at the end of Zechariah. We are a people who live between communities. We are a people that the whole book is careful and magnificent and wonderful. But I want to encourage you that there is no way to end up being stripped of your identity to the point where you can be a people who back off the identity of Messiah Yeshua. There is no Torah without the one who is the Logos, who is the Word of God. There is no prophets. There is no sense of empowerment, sense of the Spirit of God coming down, sense of the power of the Most High God without the firm foundation of the Word of God and without the One who was, is, and ever will be. This is what we proclaim. This is what we love. This is what we know. We are a people whom the extraordinary grace of God has been poured out upon. And anybody you can convey and communicate this to can live this life. But it's not a broad life. It's not an easy life. It's not a life that makes room for whatever you want to do. It's a life of atonement. It's a life of recognizing sin. It's a life of purification. It's a life... I'm going to make a comparison here, and it's not a perfect comparison, but I think that you'll get a sense of why the comparison exists. Probably the great scourge historically of our generation is cancer. And what ends up happening is the treatment of cancer in this day is primitive. And I firmly believe that when Messiah returns, we will find out that there was another treatment for cancer that was far more effective, far more powerful, and far less painful than, than what we know of right now. But I was married to a woman who fought cancer for 14 years. I've got good friends who are currently going through fighting cancer. And what I know about how modern medicine fights cancer is this. Fighting cancer is a game of chicken. And what ends up happening is when someone is going through fighting cancer, the idea is to nearly kill the patient and hope you kill the cancer before you kill the patient. But you're playing a game of chicken because you might not, but you're, you're going to make the patient as sick and miserable as humanly possible with the hope that the cancer gets killed before the patient gets killed. If we are willing, as people who discover that this is a disease that we have to fight, to go through this, are you not willing, brothers and sisters, to allow God to do whatever is necessary, however unpleasant it is, to set you free from sin and death. 
And all I want to suggest to you is if we will go through that sort of pain and sorrow and suffering and difficulty to deal with the physical disease that will give us more years of life in this present age. Do not have contempt for the process that God brings you through to set you free from sin, from selfishness, from narcissism, from all the rest of the horrors of this present age. Because you, brothers and sisters, belong to the one who is described in Revelation chapter 1. And the way that he has been glorified, it is his intention to bring each of us through a process and a procedure whereby we will be glorified and we will live with him forever. That's what I got. Lord, we just really thank you and bless you and praise you that you are Lord, that you are King, that you are powerful, that you are present. And Lord, we come before you knowing that you are not like us. You are extraordinarily different than us. You are set apart. You, Yeshua, lived a sinless life. And once you lived the sinless life, on top of this, you gave yourself so that we could be ransomed, so we could be redeemed, so we could be set free, and so we could always be with you. Help us to keep our eye on the target, keep our eye on the prize, and keep aimed with target lock on where you want to bring us now. We thank you for this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Yeshua, son of David, have mercy on me. Don't pass me by. Yeshua, son of David, have mercy on me. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Let's sing that again. Yeshua, son of David. Have mercy on me, don't pass me by. Yeshua, Son of David, have mercy on me, don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by, don't pass me by, come dwell with me, take your place with me.
Take your mercy seat, O Lord. 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 Take your mercy, seed of Lord. Yeshua, Son of David, have mercy on me. Don't pass me by. As we gather here, may healing rivers flow to worship in this house. May your rule heart grow. Gather her. Forgiven but promised a new name. Nowhere compares to being with you. Across the generations, Across the generations. they have sought you too. Without power, a remnant without power, trusting only in you, trusting only you, facing Pharaoh's merchants, kings, the worst Babylon could bring in all. As we gather here, may healing rivers flow to worship in this house. May your rule heart flow. Forgive 
heaven but promised a new name. Nowhere compares to being with you. Gather needing your grace, forgiven but promised a new name. No present help in trouble. Therefore we do not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roll and foam, and the mountains quake, with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. There is a river. The city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore we do not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the most high dwells. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore we do not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose stream Make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. God is our refuge and strength. God is our refuge and strength. 
God is our refuge and strength. Let our voices rise like incense. Let them be as sweet perfume. Let our praises fill the temple. Hallelujah's ringing ever new. Holy, holy is the Starry night, sunrise to sunset, your words they paint the sky. There's no one like you in all of the earth, all of creation sings of your worth. Words we can't hear in unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, it's your beauty that wakens the morning in lovely light. Lord, it's your glory that shines like diamonds on the starry night. Sunrise to sunset, your words, they paint the sky. There's no one like you in all of the earth. All of creation sings of your worth With words we can't hear But unspoken truth is spoken everywhere There's no one like you in all of the earth All of creation sings of your worth With words we can't hear but unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. Is spoken everywhere. Is spoken everywhere. Is spoken everywhere. There's no one like you in all of the earth. All of creation sings of your word with words we can't hear, but unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. May the beauty of the Most High God, may His set-apartness and may His holiness, may the one who lives in ineffable light be the one who is in your hearts. May He do a work of transformation. May He do a work of change. May He resist the tendency that you might have to make Him more like you. And may you instead, as in Revelation 1, become more and more and more like Him. Amen.